In today's video, I want to talk to you about what's been going on on the Pro Tour recently and some of the things that we can learn uh, from the top players in the world. Now, I just got back from Miami where I was at the Masters event and Novak Djokovic uh, won the tournament with a very impressive win in the finals over Rafael Nadal. Now, the interesting thing here was that Novak Djokovic also won the tournament in Indian Wells before, but he didn't play all that great in Indian Wells. He was kind of coming back uh, to, to finding his best game. He didn't play that great, but he pulled out the win in Indian Wells and that gave him a lot of confidence. And that just once again shows us how important confidence sometimes can be uh, when you're playing in tournaments and a lot of matches. So Djokovic improved his game step by step and also got better and better as the tournament went on in Miami and in the finals uh, he just played amazing tennis everything worked well his serve was dominant his backhand is probably the best shot in the game if he hits it the way uh, he was hitting it in the finals and his forehand which at times uh, has been a little shaky was also working exceptionally well so confidence sometimes really is the key and you get confidence by winning a lot of matches there's really no way around it if you are in a tournament phase, if you're in a practice phase and working on your technique, for example, that's a very different thing. But if you are in a tournament phase, you need to play a lot of matches and the confidence will only really build up with winning matches. Now, Rafael Nadal uh, played a lot better in Miami than he did in uh, Indian Wells. Um, he also seems to keep getting better even though in the finals he really didn't play all that great. He started off well in the first set, um, but then he became very defensive and especially his forehand was not working well at all for him. He was hitting way too many reverse finishes, so he's putting a lot of spin on the ball, really couldn't penetrate the court with his shots. He couldn't hurt Djokovic with the forehand. Um, and that sometimes happens when Rafa gets a little bit uh, hesitant, when he starts doubting himself because he reverts uh, to old habits, just like all of us do uh, in certain pressure type of situations. Now we all know that Rafa used to play uh, more defensive. He was hitting, uh, he was way behind the baseline, hitting with a lot of topspin and not swinging through the ball enough. And that's what happened in that match. Um, and that's, that made all the difference. If Rafa really swings through his forehand and, and hits it really well, um, then I think it would have been a close match because Rafa was actually hitting his backhand well, which had been a problem in the past. But I'm sure Rafa will come back. He knows uh, what he has to do and, and he'll find his game and he'll come back strong for the clay court season. Now, the other thing that's been very interesting in recent months is the development of Roger Federer with Stefan Edberg as his coach or consultant, whatever we want to call him. Um, Edberg has really been able to make some, some great changes to, uh, to Roger's game and Roger is playing at a phenomenal level again. And the big difference that I see is Roger is hitting over his backhand, he's hitting a lot of topspin backhands and he's got the confidence again in that shot. Um, last year he was slicing his backhand a whole lot and when he slices too much he has no chance against uh, the top players when they're at the best of their game. So they've really built a good base now. Um, Roger's forehand is working exceptionally well. He's moving around the court uh, well. He's hitting his serve extremely well. And he comes forward a little more. Edberg has obviously worked with him on that, playing the net a little bit better, a little more effectively. So in the end, I really think Roger's game is now back up to the level where he can compete with uh, Rafa and Novak even when they're at their best. However, what happened in uh, Indian Wells and Miami was that Roger once again did not play his best tennis um, in high pressure situations when it matters the most. He really played well against Djokovic in the finals in Indian Wells. Um, he was close to, to, to beating Djokovic but on the big points he didn't really go for his shots. He was a little bit hesitant. He got a little bit tight and the same thing actually happened in Miami in his uh, three set loss to Kai Nishikori. Once again, he played exceptionally well for large parts of that match, but Nishikori was able to also play really well and kind of match him. And then when it matters, that mattered the most, 
Roger once again got a little bit tight, made some unforced errors, and that's really what they need to work on for him uh, to, to win against those guys late in the tournaments, late in the Grand Slams. But I think there are, there are great things ahead for Roger, the way he's playing now. And the other player I just talked about, Kai Nishikori, is worth uh, noting here as well. Has really improved his game. He's working with Michael Chang as his coach. And he's playing very aggressive. He's moving well around the court. And what I found really impressive was he really played fearless in the most important moments against Roger late in the third set. He really went for his shots and he had the confidence and the belief that he can win that match and that he can hit uh, aggressive shots when it matters the most. So that was great to see. I think there are great things ahead for Kai Nishikori if he manages to stay healthy, which has been an issue in the past. And last but not least, also another interesting player in the men's game right now is Alexander Dolgopolov. He's really upped his game. He beat Nadal in Indian Wells. He has a great game, great serve, great ground strokes. He can move. And I think if he can continue to play like this and be mentally tough, um, he can become a top 10 player uh, in the next couple of months. All right, now on to the women's game. Now the women's game at the moment is not quite as exciting in my opinion. Serena Williams, when she's playing well, is absolutely unbeatable. She is dominant and the combination that she has, which is great technique, she has a great serve, great forehand, great backhand, with a superior athleticism, superior strength, um, really is something that no player can, can match at the moment on the women's tour. And uh, on top of that, Serena also has the mental toughness going for her. She can always up her game um, when it gets close. And, and some of the girls have been able to be up in a set against her, but then she just raises her level um, to a whole different level that then nobody can really uh, hang with. <coughs> Excuse me. In the finals of uh, Miami, she beat Nali. And Nali has really been uh, doing some, some good things with her game. She's improved. She's doing well with her coach, Carlos Rodriguez, a great coach who was also coaching Justine Nan back in the days. And, uh, but still, she does not have that combination. She's very athletic, has a phenomenal backhand, but her forehand is just not strong enough and her serve is also not strong enough. And in the end, that's, that's just not good enough to, to compete with Serena. Same thing with Maria Sharapova. She played well there against Serena for, um, for the better part of one set. Um, she was really playing out of her mind from the baseline. She was making unbelievable shots. But still, it's not enough because Maria, she really struggles with that serve. The serve is uh, a lot weaker than Serena's serve, big disadvantage. But then also, she's not quite as athletic, so she cannot move around the court the way Serena can. And that just is too much to... Uh, to come to overcome and, and, and really Maria, in my opinion, unless she fixes that serve, she does not have a chance to beat Serena when it, when it matters. Um, she's been working with a new coach recently, but it does not look to me like the serve has changed at all. Same problems on the serve. So for her, it's really all about that. She's so tough mentally. If she can develop that serve and really serve well, then I think she would have a chance against Serena. Um, when they're both playing their best. Last but not least, Victoria Azarenka, she's been injured. I think she is the only player, um, or, or she has the best chance to, to play against Serena, and to have a chance against Serena, because she plays exceptionally well from the baseline, and she moves really well. And her serve is also a little better. It's not great, but it's better than Nali's serve or Maria Sharapova's serve. So when she gets back to her top form, she is the main competitor for Serena, in my opinion. But in the end, Serena, as long as she plays like this, um, is going to dominate on the women's tour. If you enjoyed this video, I'd like to ask you to click the like button below. And also subscribe to my YouTube channel if you haven't done so yet, because then you will receive all of the newest videos.